If you watched any of my hand saw foundations videos, you know that I put a lot of emphasis on proper sawing mechanics in that course. And that's because proper mechanics is critical for making consistent, precise saw cuts. It's very important when sawing to ensure that the hand saw and your wrist, forearm, elbow, and shoulder all work within the same plane. If any one of these parts should break out of that single plane, it will pull the saw off course. Using a hand plane successfully also requires some focus on proper mechanics. So let's take a look at how to properly use a hand plane. And after we understand the how, we'll also take a look at why it works. In general, the goal of using a hand plane is to create a smooth, flat surface. So in order to get the hand plane to do these things sufficiently, we need to focus our hand planing on keeping the plane flat on the work. I like to think about a hand plane in two sections, the area in front of the blade and the area behind the blade. We'll see later that it's not possible to keep both of these sections of the plane flat on the work at the same time. So instead, we'll need to strategically change the part of the plane that contacts the work during different parts of the planing stroke. We do this by changing where we apply the downward pressure to the tool, either over the toe or over the rear handle. At the beginning of the stroke, we apply pressure only over the toe of the plane, and that's to keep the plane from tipping down as we begin the stroke. If the plane were to tip down as we start to plane, we're going to plane this forward edge at an angle, and we could actually chip out that corner. As the plane begins to cut, and the rear portion of the plane comes over the board, pressure switches from the front handle to the rear handle. Now traditional wisdom says that you put equal pressure over the front and rear of the plane at this point. However, as we'll see later, this is not only unnecessary, it's really not even possible. So instead, at this point, just focus on putting your pressure over the rear handle. As you come to the end of the cut, don't put any downward pressure at all on the front of the plane. Instead, just ride the plane right off the edge. If you put any downward pressure here towards the end of the stroke, similar to this side, the plane could tip down and you could plane an angle at this corner. So here's what the full stroke looks like. Pressure only over the front at the beginning of the stroke, transferring the pressure at the rear as the full plane gets engaged and no pressure coming off the edge of the board at the end of the stroke. Now there's no need to take your hands off either one of the handles. I only did so to exaggerate the shift in weight or the shift in pressure from the front handle to the rear handle. However, when you're learning to use a hand plane, I do recommend that you really focus on that weight transfer from the front to the back through the planing stroke until it becomes second nature. So now that we understand how to plane properly, let's take a minute to understand why this works. I mentioned earlier that it's not possible to keep both the area in front of the blade and the area behind the blade in contact with the wood at the same time. That's because the sole of the plane is flat from front to back and the blade projects below the bottom of the sole. So the blade actually acts as a fulcrum at the start of the cut, when pressure is mostly over the toe of the plane, the rear of the plane is suspended above the section of the board that was just cut by the blade. As pressure moves from the toe to the rear handle, the plane body pivots at the blade. The rear of the plane now rests on the wood, and the toe of the plane is lifted off the board. We can actually demonstrate this happening by using a piece of paper as a sort of feeler gauge. And I'll also use a plane that's set for a slightly thicker cut to make the demonstration a little easier to follow. 
So as noted at the beginning, all the pressure is down over the toe. And at this point, the rear of the plane is just not in contact with the wood. As you can see, I can take this piece of paper and slide it under the plane all the way up to the blade. But after I shift my weight from the front to the rear, I can no longer slide the paper underneath the back of the plane. But it will slide under the front because now the toe has been lifted off the board. Of course, the degree to which the toe is lifted off the board will vary depending on the shaving thickness, but it will happen in every case. So because only half of the sole can be in contact with the board at any given time, we can use a plane with a flat sole to plane a straight edge, even though the blade projects below the sole. If a plane didn't work this way, we'd need to have the front of the sole and the back of the sole at different heights, just like we do in a power joiner.